All right, I'm gonna try standing for one of these videos. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about why you shouldn't buy a two bedroom condo. Let's get into it. I'm Nat Asian Kelly. I talk about Canadian real estate in my local market of Abbotsford and the Fraser Valley. And if you guys get any value or entertainment, all that I would ask is that you subscribe to the channel, drop me a like, and if you wanna chat, you can do so by scrolling down into the description, clicking on the link that I provided so you can book yourself right into my calendar so we can chat. So I get this question all the time. What is the best investment? Where should I put my money? Condo, townhome, what type of condo, what type of townhome, what kind of detached house? And because investing is subjective, different for everyone based on their financial situation and where they wanna go in their life, I'm gonna aim this video primarily at people who are brand new investors making their first investment into real estate. And oddly enough, this is the group of people who typically wanna buy two bedroom condos. So what I wanna talk about is why you shouldn't buy a two bedroom condo and why you should opt into instead buying a one bedroom condo. So reason number one why you should buy a one bedroom condo Condo over a two bedroom condo is because of cap rates. So I'm gonna throw up two examples here of two condos that just sold in the last 30 days in Abbotsford. I'm gonna blank out the addresses because I'm not allowed to show you this information. So as long as you have no address to connect it to, it should be fine. But we have the two bedroom that sold for 470, both in West Abbotsford and the one bedroom that sold for 315. So if you buy the two bedroom and you obviously took out a loan to do this, it would cost you roughly an extra 800 bucks a month to own the two bedroom in comparison to the one bedroom. Now the one bedroom, I'm gonna guess, probably will rent from anywhere from 650 a month to 1700, but probably closer to 1700, while the two bedroom, you'll probably fetch 2300 bucks a month. So you're actually losing an extra 200 bucks a month by buying the two bedroom condo. So your cash flow numbers, cap rates should look a little bit better by getting into a one bedroom condo as opposed to getting into a two bedroom condo, and you're also putting less money down. Reason number two, people will argue that two bedroom condos appreciate better and have better resale value. They don't, they pretty much appreciate at the same rate. And uh, I could even make the argument that one bedrooms may even start to outpace two bedrooms going into the future just because of how unaffordable it is to buy anything here in BC. I'm gonna see more and more people or I expect to see more and more people get forced into a one bedroom condo as opposed to getting forced into a two bedroom condo. Like if a two bedroom condo is 500K on average, there's never gonna be a scenario where the same age one bedroom condo is going to be 250 grand. That gap is too large, just becomes too attractive to buy one bedroom condos, both for investors, first time home buyers, whoever it may be, it just becomes too attractive for buyers to now leave alone the two bedroom condos and enter the one bedroom condo market. And then that's just going to push up the prices in the one bedroom condos till it's, you know, that gap is exactly where it needs to be from one beds to two beds. So there's always gonna be a gap in price between the two, but I expect that it will always be maintained. There might be times where it widens or it gets slimmer or whatever it may be, but there's always going to be a gap. I personally think the gap is going to get slimmer as more and more buyers get pushed into one bedroom condos. Meaning that one bedroom condos may actually appreciate better than two bedroom condos, but I think at the very least they'll appreciate the same. And reason number three, and this is probably the most important reason in my opinion, is tenant turnover. So here in BC, we cannot raise the rent on our tenants. This year, you're allowed to do the minimum or the maximum prescribed amount is 2%, but in most years, it's actually lower than that. Meanwhile, rent goes up roughly seven to 10% every single year. So after you, know, you buy a condo, you rent it out for five years, if the tenant never leaves because we can't actually kick them out, you need, you need to actually move into the condo to have a viable reason to evict a tenant out of your unit other than them you know screwing up on their part you actually have to say that you're going to live in the unit and then actually go live in the unit to have you know a viable reason for kicking a tenant out so after five years if you've been bumping up the rent two percent or one and a half percent you know they're going to be paying 30 to 40 percent under market value rents depending on what the rental market has done during that time it typically goes up seven to ten percent every year and this creates a few different problems so number one your strata property tax insurance uh, even your mortgage currently right now, like typically your mortgage gets cheaper over five years, but right now it's getting more expenses. 
uh, expensive. All these expenses are going up, but your rent is staying roughly the same or it's at the very least not keeping pace with all these expenses. So your cap rate is actually getting worse and worse and worse over time. Not only that, when a tenant is paying a large sum of money under market rent, it's just more incentive for them to continue staying in that unit. Like if they have to upgrade their lifestyle and they need three bedrooms or whatever it may be, they're going to stay within that two bedroom unit as long as they possibly can because they're getting such a good deal on rent. So what ends up happening is is now your ROI, your cap rate, everything is just turning to shit after five years. And your only option is to realistically sell that unit, which if you're in a bad market, um, you may not be able to do, or you're gonna basically have to drop your pants and accept a low ball offer depending on the market that you're in. Another problem is that tenanted units typically show like crap. And what I mean by that is you can't stage them. If they're vacant, at least, you know, the, the buyer can come in and they can envision all their furniture in the home. But if you have a tenant living there, they're typically not going to, um, and maybe not all, like I have a tenant who keeps the house very clean, right? But I'm just saying like, this is a, a very, um, this can happen, right? Like if your tenant is not keeping good care of the place, they're leaving stuff everywhere, there's food all over the counter, they've got, you know, family pictures and stuff all, all over the wall. It's going to be very difficult for any end user, somebody who wants to live in the unit, to actually envision themselves living in that unit, get emotional about the unit, and wanna buy the unit for a good price that makes sense for you. The worst part about this is you'll pretty much lose the entire investor buyer pool because any investor isn't going to want to buy a unit and inherit your tenant first off, but secondly, inherit a tenant that's paying substantially under market rent because just like you they're not going to be able to kick that tenant out unless they're moving into the unit right so any investor isn't going to want to inherit a tenant or inherit a tenant that's paying vastly under market rent so you can pretty much kiss the entire investor pool bye bye and supply and demand would dictate that the more demand you have for something the higher the price will be well you just got rid of a ton of demand with the entire investor pool being removed from being you know able to purchase your unit or wanting to purchase your unit so you can pretty much only sell to end users which obviously the unit isn't going to show very well to those end users as it is tenanted and the other thing is that tenants it's usually difficult to get showings on demand you have to give 24 hours notice sometimes they don't answer their phone whatever the case may be it's going to be a lot more difficult to show that unit and in which case again you're going to be losing potential buyers which is part of that demand equation to you selling your unit so the reason why i like one bedroom condos is people statistically move every three to five years one bedroom condos being you know the smallest asset type that we have besides studios they're going to make up the larger or the lower time frame in that statistic right so somebody who lives in a one bedroom is likely going to move out every two or three years sweet spot probably being every two and a half to three years meaning every two and a half to three years clean up the unit put a new tenant in there whatever the market rate is and you're good to go it also gives you more liquidity in the sense that every two or three years you're going to have the option to sell that unit vacant it'll show great um, you can show it whenever that your realtor is going to throw a lockbox on it and you know realtors can come with their buyers and view it whenever they'd like all times throughout the day and any end users will easily be able to envision all their furniture within the home how they'll set up all their furniture and how they'll actually use that space so it'll be a lot easier to sell every two or three years when the tenant vacates you'll have the option to sell it if you'd like to and your cap rates are gonna be a lot better and you're gonna be able to likely get the new market rent every two and a half, three years. And in my opinion, you're probably gonna to wanna to buy a one bedroom that's at least 500 square feet, maybe 550 is probably the sweet spot. That is the size of unit where you're likely gonna get that two and a half to three year turnover. A lot of things change. People start dating, they get married, they have kids, they change jobs. Pretty much all of these things will result in your tenant having to move out and get a bigger space. Now. The problem with two bedrooms is that you could theoretically live your entire life in a two bedroom, especially if you only had one kid or you had no kids at all. People could theoretically just live in a two bedroom for 10, 15, 20 years. And I hear that happening a lot where somebody's still paying an $1,100 a month rent from 2009. And now that unit should rent for, you know, 2,600 bucks, 27, 2,800 bucks, right? So although two bedrooms would be perceived to be a more quality asset, I think you're going to run into a lot more problems just with our landlord tenant laws here in BC. 
and I would personally opt into getting a one bedroom. So all of this sounds very cold and dehumanizing and I don't mean to make it sound that way. I am very empathetic towards a lot of tenants and renters and their situation and the circumstances that have put them in that situation. But at the end of the day, this is a real estate channel and I gotta give my investors, my clients, my followers, whatever, the information necessary so they can have, you know, they can come to their own decision on where to put their valuable hard earned money. And this is definitely something that you need to consider when you are investing in real estate. So if you enjoyed this, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and we'll see you on the next one, guys. Peace.